Hey what's up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So in today's Unity tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a door system in Unity. Now I actually already recorded this tutorial a couple days ago and I've actually been editing it the last couple days. And um, it's not a tutorial where I talk either, which is why it's been taking a while, because usually in them tutorials I use a lot of text and it usually takes a couple days to uh, edit all that in. But um, yeah, when it comes to my voice tutorials, these usually take longer to record, which is why I'm using my voice right now. Because I actually planned to get this tutorial released today, right? But I don't know if I'll be able to get it released today now. Hopefully I can, that's why I'm using my voice, so then I can get it edited quicker. But uh, yeah, the reason as to why I'm re-recording the tutorial is because I wanted to make it better. Uh, the tutorial I recorded before wasn't that bad, but I felt that I could do it better. And uh, yeah, I'll explain more towards uh, the end of the video why uh, exactly I wanted to re-record it. But um, yeah, I think you guys get the gist of it. Basically, I just wanted to make the tutorial a lot better, you know, and just, yeah. Alrighty, so how about now we finally get started. So first up here, we have our door frame. Now, this is an important, the most important part about this is the door. So with me, I've just got a, a elongated cube as my door, so just a rectangle basically. Uh, you guys most likely have your own door objects, which is totally fine. I'm just going to be using a cube for this tutorial. Anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on our door and we're going to go create empty. And then uh, we're going to move this out from underneath our door and we're going to call this door hinge. So this is going to be our doors hinge. Now what you want to do is you want to move this to either the left or right side of your door. I'm just going to move it to the right side. And then you want to make your door a child object of the door hinge. Alright, so now when we're done with that, uh, what you want to do is see this uh, top left uh, icon here. What you want to do is you want to click on it and then you want to make sure that your uh, option is set to pivot instead of center because if it's set to center it'll be like this but if you set it to pivot it'll be like this and then you'll notice that you can actually rotate uh, your door like a normal door so yeah that's cool now what you want to do is you want to create a parent object and we're going to call this door parent and uh, yeah, nice. We've got that all done. Alrighty, so next up what you want to do is you want to go Window, and then you want to go Animation, Animation, and then this will open up your Animation window. And then you want to click on Create, and now we're going to create a Door Open Animation. Alrighty, so once you get that created, you want to click on the red button here to the left to start recording. And then you want to select your door hinge and then uh, select on a random part of your timeline. So I'm going to go with half a second it's going to take for the door to open. And then you just want to rotate your door so then it opens. And now we've got a door open animation. Just uh, click the red button to stop recording now. And then uh, what you want to do is you want to click on this tab. And then you want to go create new clip. Door close. And now we're going to create our door close animation. So what we're going to do for this to make it a lot easier is we're going to go back onto our door open animation. And then we're going to copy this animation. So our door open animation, we're going to go control C and then control V. And then what you want to do is you want to reverse the keyframes like this. And boom, now we have our door close animation easily done. Alrighty, so uh, make sure you save your project often, by the way, when doing this. So now go Window, Animation, Animator, and this will open up your animator. So make sure you have your uh, door parent selected as well, so then you can actually uh, see your animations here. Now what you want to do is you want to create a new state, so you want to right click, go Create State, Empty, and then you want to right click on that and go Set as Layer Default State. And good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a few triggers. So we're going to go uh, create open and then close. And good. So now you want to right click on your new state and go make transition. And then you want to like do a transition arrow to both door open and close animations. 
Now you want now what you want to do is you want to go onto your uh, transition arrows and you want to disable has exit time. Go plus in the conditions and then make sure uh, they're set to the correct condition. So for example, if you have a transition arrow going to the door open animation, set the condition to open. If it's going to the door close animation, then you want to set it to close. And then you want to make transition arrows from both the door open to the door close and door close to door open. And then do the same thing basically. And uh, there we go. Boom. Alrighty, so now we've got our doors animator prepared. Uh, all that is pretty much prepared now. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our door. And uh, you want to create a new tag, so you want to go add tag. And now I've already got this tag added, but what you want to do is you want to create a new tag called door. So go plus and then just type door and add a new tag like that. And then what you want to do is once you create a new tag, uh, make sure you tag your door as door. And boom, now we're all good. Alrighty, so next up what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a door script. So let's do that. And then once you create your script, um, just let it do whatever it needs to do with the reloading script assemblies. Then click on the uh, script to open it. So once you open up your script, you want to get rid of the starter stuff. And then we're going to create a few variables here. So public float. And then this is going to be the interaction distance. And then we're going to go public game object. And this will be the int text. So let me explain what these variables are. So the interaction distance, this is the distance from which the player can interact with the door. And then the int text, basically what this is, is it's the text that shows up to let you know that you can interact with the door when you are looking at it. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go void update. And so what the update void does for anyone who doesn't understand is it basically just does things every frame. And then you want to create a new ray variable here. Go ray, ray. And then we're going to go new ray. And then you want to go transform.position, transform.forward. So what this will do is from our camera's position, it will shoot out a ray. And then you want to enter raycast hit, hit. So this is just a raycast hit variable. And then next up what you want to do is you want to go if physics dot raycast ray out hit interaction distance if hit dot collider dot game object dot tag equals to door. So what this is doing is um, if the raycast hits an object tagged as door, what we'll do then is we'll then create a few newer variables down here. So we'll go game object door parent, and then you want to go door parent equals hit dot collider dot transform dot root dot game object. Hopefully that works. Um, in fact, just to see if that uh, works there. And yep, it reloads the script assembly, so that is all good. There we go. Alrighty, so now let's continue on with the script. So what this does, right, is when the raycast hits an object tagged as the door, because the um, object tagged as door isn't like the uh, door's parent object, which will have the animator and stuff on it, right? What you want to do is we create a, a variable down here called door parent, and then uh, we get the hit.collider.transform.root.game object. So what this does is it gets the parent object of the uh, door, of not just the door, but of the door hinge as well, because the root is like the parent parent object. It's like the main parent object. So that's what we're getting here. Uh, hopefully my explanation there was okay. Um, I will be adding comments throughout this script for anyone who ever does get confused. So now what you want to do is you want to go uh, animator door anim equals door parent dot get component uh, animator 
And yeah, so now we've got the uh, doors animator from our door parent. Something else too that will be done is um, the int text will be turned on. Int text dot set active true. Alrighty, so we've got uh, this part of the script here. Now we're going to get into the uh, whole interaction part of it. So if input dot get key down key code dot e. And before we do a uh, continue on with this, actually, there is a few new uh, string variables we should add. So what you want to do is you want to add a few new string variables. We're going to go door open anim name. So this will be the uh, name of your doors open animation. And then we're going to go door close anim name. So this will be the name of your doors close animation. So then we're going to go if door anim dot get current animator. Oh, uh, animator state info zero because it'll be on the uh, zero layer dot is name and then you want to go uh, door open anim name and then what we're going to do here is uh, so basically if the animator's state if the door's animator state is set to the door open animation then what will happen is we will do door anim dot reset trigger open door anim dot set trigger close there we go and then we're going to copy this and we're going to do the same thing down here Alrighty, so that is like the main interaction part of the script done. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go else. And so, yeah, this is going to be on the same line of the uh, if input dot, wait, no, sorry, um, this shouldn't be here. This should be uh, here. This is where this should be. So else, so if it's uh, not hitting the door, then in text will equal to false. So basically, yeah, if it's um if the raycast is hitting the door, in text will equal true. If it's not, then in text will equal false. And yeah, so um that should be like the main script. Hopefully, this all works out right. Let's go. And boom. So now what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh hold on a second. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this onto our camera. And then uh, your int text. So if you don't have int text, um, what it is basically is it's just like text like this. As you can see, it just says E. So when I'm looking at the door, this will pop up. If you don't know how to get text, you can go game object, UI, text mesh pro, or you can use the legacy text if you like. I'm actually using the legacy text here. But yeah. So um, now let's fill in the uh, variables of our script. So you want to fill in your int text. The uh, interaction distance, I might set this to like 7. And then you want to type in your door open and door close animation names. And boom. Okay guys, so um, uh, one thing to make sure of is uh, make sure you don't, uh, like, you know how I have like a door frame here, right? Make sure that uh, your door frame, if you have yours as like your parent object of your door parent, if you're doing a similar thing to me, Make sure that it's not like a um a uh, a parent object. Probably make it like a child or something maybe. And uh, one reason for that is because well uh, something that I've actually noticed is because we were trying to get the uh, root transform of the uh, of the door, which means you know it's like parent parent object, its main parent object. It was getting the door frame, and the door frame doesn't have anything attached to it. So when I just tried out the script before, uh, nothing really worked because, as you can see here, I'm getting all these errors. There is no animator attached to the door frame game object, but a script is trying to access it. So yeah, uh, make sure that if you have a door frame as your parent object, um, you don't have it as your parent object. Make sure your door parent object, which has your animator on it, is like the main parent object.
So yeah, be sure to make sure of that. Okay guys, so just a slight change what we're going to be doing here. So basically, um, you know how like earlier on when setting up the animator, right, we create that new empty state? Well, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. It's just going to start on the uh, door closer animation now. And the reason as to why is just because, um, yeah, I was just having some troubles with uh, the new empty state before. And yeah, this wasn't really uh, doing well. Here's what I'm going to do, right? I'm gonna like uh, copy and paste this door around, sort of just to show like, like yes, this works. And you don't need like a, and it all just is on one script on just the main camera as well, which is nice. It's just a full on like system. So uh, yeah, anyways, here we are and boom, we can open up the door and close it as you can see. So that's really cool. And it works with all these doors here too. So yeah. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial and uh, hopefully it was easy to understand for you guys. Um, honestly, uh, this was really, really cool making this. But yeah, so if you guys did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And uh, before I do end this tutorial as well, obviously there's gonna be a few uh, things that I need to iron out because uh, as you can see, sometimes when I'm like, um, it's sort of hard to do, but sometimes if I like get away from the door, as you guys can see, um, the in text sort of like um like stays. It's sort of weird. We're gonna fix it up though, make sure it doesn't happen anymore. So yeah. But um, before I do uh do that, I just want to talk a bit about why I'm actually why I actually re-recorded this tutorial today and why I didn't just continue editing the uh, other one I had already recorded. So the reason as to why is because, well, it just wasn't, like, the best. This, this script here that I've made, right, this, like, door system is a lot better because uh, basically with my other tutorial, right, there was, like, a script which was attached to each door. And, uh, yes, each door had their own script attached to them and they all had variables and stuff like that. Basically, it's just an all, a normal average Omegonics tutorial, you know, usually what you see from my normal tutorials. But today is a lot different, and I, I just wanted to do something a lot more different today because I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys about, like, oh, why don't you use ray casting in your tutorials? And, you know, it's just because I've been so used to using triggers and doing things my own little quirky way for so long that, you know, I just don't really do things, um, you know, like uh, with ray casting and stuff like that that much. I just do a lot of stuff with triggers. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to do something different today, and I am really glad I made this tutorial. And I hope that you guys, um, you know, could learn something from it as well. Okay guys, so I've done a bit more ironing out. What I've actually done is I've set the uh, interaction distance to free. And then with the script, I've actually, uh, so this line of code here, um, I've also moved this down over here as well. So that actually fixes up the quirk with the uh, int text not disappearing even when not looking at the door. So uh, yeah. Now let's get in here and try it out. And uh, boom, as you can see, uh, the in text now goes away all the time when we're actually not looking at the door anymore. And uh, yeah, everything works pretty perfectly now. So yeah guys, again, if you did enjoy this tutorial and it did help you out a lot, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. Um, do expect more tutorials like this in the future, which are more like, I guess you could say system based, um, like this. And, you know, it's all just contained on one script as well, which is really, really good. So, uh, yeah. And also, something else that I want to mention as well is you guys probably already have your own script with, like, a, you know, that uses a Raycast, right? If you guys wanted to, if you didn't want to just, like, uh, like use the full door script I've written, you can take out um, the certain parts of the script that you might need to integrate into your current Raycast script if you want to do it like that. But um, yeah, either that or you could just use the entire door script I wrote. It's up to you guys really, but yeah, overall I'm, I'm really proud of what I've done here. Something else that I've also just remembered as well is that you guys will probably want, uh, you know, door sounds as well. That's actually something that I completely forgot about is door sounds. So um, what we're going to do for this is we're going to go onto the door and we're just going to simply add an audio source to it just like that and then we'll turn off play on awake 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our door script. So what you guys want to do is you want to go public audio clip and then you want to go uh, door open, door close. So these are going to be your door open, door close sounds. And then uh, here, right, we're going to have, wait, we're going to go um, audio source. So we're going to create an audio source variable and we're going to go um, door sound. And this will be hit dot game object. I know, sorry. Hit dot collider dot game object dot get component audio source. There we go. And then what will happen is um we'll go door sound dot clip. So because the door's closing here, it will equal to the uh, door close sound. And then door sound will play. And then we're going to do a very similar thing here. We're going to have a door open. And uh, yeah. Oh wait, forgot something guys, hold on. Apparently I forgot something. What does it say here? Oh there we go, alright. Alrighty, so now that is done. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to fill in them new variables we've got. And we should be all goods. So door open. And then door close. And then boom, we're all goods. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you've got multiple doors, just make sure that you have your, uh, you know, your audio source um, on the other doors. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of these other doors. Um, oh, and also, by the way, with your audio source as well, don't forget to make it a 3D and um, you know, play around with like um, how far the sound is, you know, so it's max and minimum distance. For me, it'll just be like this. And um, I also have the volume roll off set to linear. And then we'll actually uh, copy and paste this door around again. And now we'll test it out. So as you can see, the door open and door close sounds play. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys did learn something from this tutorial. I'm really, really happy with this. And yeah, so as you guys can see, door open and door close sounds. So anyways, guys, again, if you did enjoy this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.